the uh, big bearing race in the back where the prop shaft ran in and I know you can't see it very well um, this lower unit did have some water in it and there seems to be some staining or maybe I don't know discoloration or whatever of the bit not discoloration but like not from heat but anyway it just seems like the bearings slightly different color in a couple of spots but no major pitting there so I'd say that bearing race is fine and I'll know when I put the uh, the bit the uh, that gear back in place and spin it and see so there's a little trick that uh, at this point you got to realize I guess I'll hold the camera level here and power the, the uh, foot's like that there's a shift um, mechanism that goes back there and it looks like this and it rotates to put the, the thing in neutral forward reverse neutral reverse forward how does that thing go in there but then I notice it says up so that part that surface goes up and uh, it fits right on the end of the, the, the shaft here it's a keyed shaft and if I leave the outboard motor in reverse which it's in right now then this part here faces towards the propeller so I'm just gonna put it in like that this part faces towards the propeller that's how that goes in there so if you're wondering that's it uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the phone down here I'll take the shift shaft I'll put it down through the top and line it up in that spot right there and then I can put the next gear in and then the pinion and then the front gear and then the that thing uh, so I'll do that in a minute okay folks so now we've got the shift shaft I put the shift shaft down through the hole in the lower unit and see if I can get a good photo of this and turn the shift shaft on the top and that puts it in and out of gear and in a moment I'll show you what that thing pushes on to cause it to go in and out of gear so one other thing I want to point out here at the top of this shift or not at the top but this area of the shift shaft there's a little uh, circle up there and that's very important that needs to uh, be there uh, because after you install the water pump back on top of the lower unit that little C-clip circlip is rubbing against this bushing which is pressed up in the housing and what that means is because of that you're allowed to take this whole lower unit off of the outboard while leaving the shift shaft in the outboard if that circlip wasn't there as soon as there was any kind of distance between the foot and the outboard like when you're changing a water pump or something um, if that circlip wasn't there this shaft would pull out and that little shifting mechanism would fall out of place and then you'd be forced to take this lower unit apart to put that back into place so real lesson here once you take the foot off don't pull up on that shaft unless you plan to also take this all apart but if you never pull up on that shaft and you keep it down there keep it down it will stay in that gear and that little uh, shifting mechanism and keep it in place okay the next step is for me to finish off this water pump and uh, I'm going to change the gasket here clean the surfaces put a new gasket down um, put the housing down and put a new water pump in it so the gasket is part 324637 and it was 10 bucks and uh, we'll carry on so before you destroy your old gasket and rip it off of there this one actually looks like it might come off in one piece anyway but put your new gasket on top make sure it's gonna fit like maybe somebody sold you the wrong part or you want to make sure all the bolt holes line up it looks the same because if you destroy your old gasket you know this old gasket I could reuse it it's it's not in bad shape but I get the whole thing apart so I'm not gonna save it I'll put a new one on but if I had to I wouldn't hesitate to put this back together Anyway, the new gasket fits, so I'm going to clean the old junk off and put, put the new one on. Okay, here I am. New gasket's on there. And I cleaned the old mating surface off with a razor blade, and so this new gasket is going to be just fitting on there nicely. 
And I'm not sure why it makes a difference, but it does say this side up, so I will pay attention. Um, the old gasket was, uh, in fact, it came off pretty well intact, so it was, uh, I know you can't tell just from that, just based on that whether it was leaking, but I think it was pretty sound. I don't, I know that uh, this is the uh, top of the water, sorry, the bottom of the water pump. Water pump housing looks like that. Um, I know these seals were leaking because I pressure tested them and I could see air escaping from around here and the shaft. So to get them out, I used two hands. I've only got one here now, but anyway, I took a standard screwdriver, stuck it in there. Now this is a plastic housing, so you don't want to really refund it too hard, but these seals come out pretty easy. I just twist them like that and the seals come out just like that. And uh, now I'll clean up in there. Okay, so this is the uh, the underside of the water pump housing, and I've cleaned out the area where these seals go. And it's uh, very important that you uh, pay attention to the direction the seals go in. One goes in face down, and the other one will go in face up. Go like this. So there's the spring showing in that one, and the spring showing on that one. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this Forma gasket product. And this brush and just put put a little bit in there and then let it, it says you have to let it dry for a bit um, I don't even know if you need to put any sealant in there but because uh, these these seals are a press fit and metal into plastic so this is probably a pretty good seal anyway just press them in there but I'm still gonna put a little bit of sealant in okay I've got a thin layer of sealant on the inside of that and uh, just a thin layer. You don't need much here um, on the inside of this bore. So you take the seal, you line it up the best you can. So it's kind of flush with the, or level with the top surface there. Remember, face down or the spring side facing down. And then take a piece of wood and tap on it, just gently. You're not trying to do anything too serious here. So that'll drive it in flush, but I gotta go in even further than that, right? So I'm gonna get a socket that's the right size and then I'll drive it the rest of the way. I was initially uh, patting this on a table that's not very solid. So I put on a block of metal and then uh, tapped it in the rest of the way. And I'm gonna put just a wee 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 bit of sealant there on, on the remaining bore because that first seal cleaned the sealant off as it went down right which is okay but i'll put just a tad bit more and then i'll drive this other seal in face up this time okay folks whenever you're installing something like this it's always a challenge to know when to stop pounding it in and um, i i looked at that and thought if i got that bottom seal pounded in far enough really you only need to pound it in enough so that the top seal can get in there. And, and when the top seal is in there, you don't want it to protrude past this plastic housing. When these guys burn your caliper and the bottom part sticks out. And as you move the jaws in and out like this, this bottom part comes in and out like that. And slide it down. There. So that's the amount that the seal is within that bore, and that's the amount of space for the new seal. So at the other end of the caliper, that's the amount of space that is within the bore and the amount for the new seal. So as long as the new seal fits in there, we're in good shape. And it does. It fits right in there. So that means I can stop pounding that down in there. And again, this is a plastic housing, so I use the word pound very carefully here. <laughs> Okay, I'll put some new sealant in there and put this top one in spring side up. Another little tip here. So I just put this thin skim of gasket maker uh, on the inside of the bore and on the top of the seal. I'm going to drive it down until the two seals touch. Uh, but you don't want to have that seal on getting any way near the rubber. That rubber is to do its sealing job on its own. You don't want that sealant to interfere with that. So um, I put some on and then in one spot I got a little too close to the rubber so I took a screwdriver a tiny tiny screwdriver put it inside a rag and then just clean that uh, 
clean that off. In fact, there's a little bit uh, at six o'clock in the camera, that angle that I'm going to go clean off before six and nine before I assemble it. Okay, so we get the second seal in there and uh, it's pounded down and then flush. I use that block of wood so it pounds down just as far as it needs to until it bottoms out and it, or until it uh, gets flush with the surface and then the wood block on top won't pound any further. So you've done that. So the next part is replacing the o-ring in the top of this uh, housing right here and I've got the old o-ring out and um, I was just as curious to see if it would wear or not. It didn't look damaged or anything but I measured the inside of it and uh, I just measured it, set this vernier caliper so that there's just enough friction to hold it so the o-ring won't fall down. That's the old one, put it over there. Here's the new one. I mean it looks physically, well, I don't know. It doesn't look that much. If we put them side by side, they look the same. But anyway, um, when I go to try and put it on here, it won't fit. Like I could force it, but I don't want to do that. But it definitely will not drop down the way that the other one will. So the roll ring is uh, obviously bigger, or well, smaller diameter on the inside. Ooh, and it is uh, hard to push in there. I'm going to put a little uh, oil on that and then slide it into place. And then this part will be done. Okay, so that O-ring's in there. Obviously, it uh, doesn't provide a lot of resistance. It went in really easy. I just lubed it up a bit with some gear oil and uh, it's ready to go. So now with this piece of my hand ready to go with the new seals and the new O-ring, we're going to put it on the top of this shaft, slide it down all the way, and it's going to pick up as it goes down. It's going to pick up this little thing right here. Now, this is a two-function bushing. Um, one, well, three things, I guess. For one, this bushing keeps the shift shaft steady so that the bushing does, or the shift shaft doesn't move around too much and doesn't wear at that O-ring. So that's the first job. The second job is this bushing, when you slide it down all the way, it bottoms out against that, that little circlip right there. And so because that bushing is going to be held down by the water pump plastic housing, that bushing holds the circlip in place, which holds the shift shaft down into the gear case on its little um, shift mechanism down in there. Uh, the third thing is this right here holds that o-ring in place. So uh, this is pretty important, pretty important little part here. So I'm going to lube up the shaft just a little bit with some gear oil. Don't need much. There is a nick in uh, in this shaft right here. When, uh, when it came out it got nicked just ever so slightly. So I'm going to use a flat file and just take that off. And if you get a situation where you can't take the nick off or it's corroded or something like that, um, just wrap a very thin layer of black tape around it, lube it up, and that O-ring should slide right over it. Also, uh, as uh, you saw earlier, I've got the gasket surface cleaned up. Um, this doesn't have to be mirror, mirror shiny, but it does have to be completely smooth. So use a razor blade and uh, clean up the surface completely and make sure that uh, you get all the old gasket off there and don't gouge the new surface. Okay, <clears throat> so I slid this water pump housing down the shift shaft, pushed it in place. Um, I, it's a bit of an interference fit, not here, but the surface that goes into the, the aluminum housing. So I gently tapped it down with a mallet, just ever so slightly, or gently. And then I could install this bolt and this bolt and this bolt, which is the bolts that go, that's where they go. Um, however, the water pump, this part, <clears throat> in the end, when I'm done this, the water pump is going to go on there. And of course, the bolts are designed to go off that distance. Um, so the bolts that belong there are long. Um, I want to actually test this before putting the water pump on because I want to see if the gear case is leaking. Uh, would leak oil so I've got four other bolts that are the same thread and put them in but they just have to be shorter so that will tighten this plastic housing all the way down to the aluminum housing okay so before I can go any further and reinstall that drive shaft down there I've got to finish this bottom in and I'll just